Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my tiling trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install floor tiles, showing you one technique that can be used across a number of different layout patterns. The tools and products you're going to require are your tiles, a tile cutter, spacers and packers, a spirit level, tape measure, pens, set square, string line and a rubber mallet. You're going to need your floor tile adhesive, large bucket, a drill and a paddle for mixing it and don't forget your PPE. Once it's mixed you'll need a serrated edge trowel for spreading it but most importantly a pen and paper for drawing out your plan and sizes. Now I'm going to be tiling directly onto these cement boards which have been bedded to the floorboards and screwed through to the joists. Clean off any dust and debris, check your levels throughout the room. Once you've inspected the floor then turn your attention to your doors because if these open inwards and you're raising the floor up by applying a tile adhesive and then a tile on top you may not be able to get the door open. When I look under here now I've probably only got about six millimeters so if I put one tile there straight away I know it's not going to open and that hasn't even got any tile adhesive below it so what I would do here is push your door shut push your tile right up against it you can see there is no gap I'm going to get a second tile now which is about 10 millimeters thick which will allow for your bed of adhesive and then I'm going to take my pencil Draw a little line right the way across there. Move the tiles and you can see that's probably about 16 or 18 millimetres that has to be cut off the bottom of the door. So open it up, unscrew it off its hinges, either plane it or cut it down and rehang it and then it should be perfect to sail over the top of your newly laid tiles. That's perfect, I've got about five millimeter clearance. All I need to do now is bed my floor tiles down. The key to every successful project really is the planning. This bathroom that I'm in here, we were laying our tiles directly onto a wooden floorboard. So we've put some cement boards down first and reinforced all the joints, likewise with our walls behind us. But planning also in the form of graph paper. Okay, so the way this is marked out, every square on here is 10 centimetres. Now, I've done three different options here of what I could do on my bathroom. I would always recommend you start from the very centre of your room, which is here, and you work your way out with your full tiles, and that'll give you an equal cut here and an equal cut there. If you find your house at home, once you work your way out from the very centre, you end up with a full tile round about here and you've got a tiny little slither. Well, it's not easy to cut and it doesn't look very good. So then what you do is you start your full tile straddling your centre point by 50%. So your full tile is right across the centre point there and each tile butt up next to one another will finish in the middle of here and that way it'll finish here and it'll give you a more easier and a better appear and cut on either side to balance it out and make it look symmetrical. So this is the layout that I'm going to be doing because I'm going to continue my line off the floor with the same tiles right the way up the wall as well. However, you may want to fit your tiles going this way, which of course is fine. You can start from the very center and work your way out this way and have some smaller cuts and likewise, straddling one in the middle if you prefer or sometimes again using the same size tile people would prefer to create a brickwork effect either one that you pick start from that center work your way out so you've got equal size cuts now i've distinguished the layout of where my first tile is going to be i can mix up some adhesive when mixing a full 20 kilo bag of tile adhesive, make sure you use approximately five liters of clean, cold water. This will ensure you get the right consistency of mix for 
fixing down your tiles. I'm using a rapid set flexible tile adhesive. It's perfect for this situation. Start by putting some water into your mixing bucket first. Slowly apply the powder. It's going to be easier to mix it with a large drill and a paddle. Slowly whisk it up until you get a nice consistency that looks like this. Now I'm ready to start fixing my tiles down. Once your adhesive is mixed, you can start to spread this onto the floor. Now my tiles are 600 by 300 millimeters wide, so they're quite large. So I'm only putting enough down for one tile. I tend to spread it out with the flat edge of the tile and trowel first, just to kind of cover the area. And then I turn this over and comb it through with the serrated edge. This spreads the adhesive a lot more evenly. Now I can place my first tile in position, making sure the center of the tile is in line with the center of my room. When trialing out the adhesive, you need to ensure that it's deep enough that when the tile is pressed and twisted into position, it forms a near full bed of adhesive in contact with the back of the tile. Alternatively, you could always spread adhesive on the back of the tile. Now apply some more adhesive ready for the second tile. When fixing down tiles close to a wall or any fixed objects, always leave at least a 6mm gap for any movement or an expansion joint. These are base clips that I'm putting in place. I slide two of them, one at the top end of the tile and one at the bottom. These are going to anchor underneath this tile and my second tile. Then I check that both edges of the tile are level. You can give this a little shake, a press and even a tap to achieve it. Again, I'll give the second tile a gentle little tap, check that it's level before I slide in two wedges between the base clips. These will help the tiles become perfectly level on the top. Once they're in position, squeeze them together, slide the application tool over the wedges and squeeze it tight, which brings the top of the tiles perfectly level. And at the same time, creating a two millimeter space between each tile. Then one final tap with a rubber hammer. Squeeze both clips a little bit tighter and it should be perfect. Then I'm ready to fix the third tile in place. Again, spreading just the right amount of adhesive for each tile. Placing two further base clips under my first tile while I lower the third one in place. Making sure that the edge of the tiles are flush to create a straight line. Pop in the wedges, two further base clips, and then your fourth tile is laid into position. Again, give this a gentle tap down with your rubber mallet and start to put your wedges in by hand to start with and then squeeze them together with the application tool. So now you've got your first four tiles firmly fixed down. You can check that they're square and each corner is running in line. One double check again with the spirit level to see that they're flush and level and then you're off. Now the adhesive that I'm using is a rapid set adhesive and you've got about 15 minutes to use this once it's mixed. Tile Mountain do stock a variety of different types of floor tile adhesive which won't react as quick. So if you're new to tiling, it may be worth considering using a standard floor tile adhesive and not the rapid set. Now, as you can notice, I'm not doing a full line across the back wall. I'm now starting to do my third course into the center of the room just to keep it square. Then I start to work my way over into the corner. This is just a little tip to keep your tiles square and neat so your lines don't veer off. And don't forget to keep using your leveling systems around each tile and double check your overall level with your spirit level. Now when you're halfway through a large room like this, you'll find yourself getting a little bit quicker each time. Now I'm buttering up the floor here to cover four tiles. I started off just doing one or two to start with, and then as you work your way through, you just put a little bit more and more down because you're gonna get better and quicker at it. 
Now you may have noticed that I haven't put any base clips in that center tile. That's because I went for a quick cup of tea and the rapid set reacted and has gone hard and therefore I couldn't slide them under. So always remember when you finish off a course, if you're remixing some adhesive or even having a cheeky cup of tea like me, slide your base clips in place first. Now tiling for me really is a passion if I'm being honest. 30 odd years ago, I went to college as a time save bricklayer. However, when running my building company, I found I'd just done hundreds, if not thousands of square meters of floor and wall tiles in both commercial and domestic premises. Now, if you're tiling a large area, it's very important, of course, to get the line perfectly straight in there. You've set your first couple of courses down, you've got your leveling systems, you know the level, you know the square, you're checking them with your spirit level. But if you haven't got a laser level, it's wise to get a piece of string, fix it in at one end, I've tied it to one of the clips, and I'm pulling it along to just double check that my seams between the tiles are perfectly straight and then you can continue that line right the way down the full length of your room you can make marks on the floor if you have to or pin it down at the opposite end even when you've laid the tiles down you can keep bringing this into position and just double check as you continue to get wider and wider in the room now you've seen how quick and easy I've been using the leveling systems and how effective they are if you've never used them before you get a starter kit in a bucket like this. This is the application tool and you have your base clip which is this and the wedge. Now this wedge is fitted on the flat side down like this. Of course the tiles are underneath here and you're going to hear it clip in like that to hold it into position. These are going to be flush here and here with the bottom of the tiles. And in the application tool, wedges on the back of this, hooks onto here and squeezes it tight. Now you've got your adhesive troweled out and combed through. I've got my base clips already put underneath the tiles that are laid. I'll take a tile now, I'll place it directly on top of there just nice and gently and then I'll place my wedges through the actual base clip. You can hear it starting to lock on we don't have to squeeze that one up just yet what I'm going to do is put some more base clips underneath each corner just leaving them about 70 or 80 millimeters away from the end of the corner of the tile and same again here and then your next tile can go in place like this Again, repeating the wedges, sliding it through by hand. I tend to do a couple of tiles like this before I take the application tool and then start to place your application tool on there and start to squeeze that wedge you feel it go tighter, so you can't really move it with your fingers. Don't do it too tight because you don't want these to break off at the moment. You have to wait until the adhesive is dry before you start to break them off. And go around all four corners of your tile, squeezing them in. Gently tapping them, just checking that you're in line across all the areas. As soon as that's in, 
you can slide the other base clips in position and start to lay the next floor tile. Now the position where you put these, when you're in a corner like this, you always want to space them out wide enough away from one another so you can get your level and tool into position and squeeze them through. Perfect. And that's how quick and easy it is to use the leveling systems. And don't forget, you can also use them on your wall tiles. So that's all my full tiles laid and set into position. I'm going to leave these to dry for a couple of hours before I can walk on them. Now, as mentioned earlier, in a large room like this, using rapid set adhesive, I prefer to lay down all the full tiles and then come back once they're dry to take my time and do all the cuts around the edges. Now I'm going to show you two methods of cutting straight tiles. One is place a full tile on top of one of the tiles that are fixed down to the floor, making sure the edges and the corners are flush. These bend down. Let's take a second tile, put it on top, slide it up to the wall, keeping these edges flush. I leave about four millimeters gap against the wall. And then when I mark it both ends with my pen, I gain another two millimeters, leaving me a full six millimeter expansion gap. And you simply mark it here and mark it here. Or you can do a straight line right the way through. This is the tile we cut with the marks on. And this piece that we've cut here will fit nice and snug in there. So I'll place my tile cutter put up against the wall so it won't move. Of course, it's got to be big enough for cutting 600 millimeter tiles, which this one is. My one pencil mark I place up here, get it directly in the center of that piece. And the other mark down here, I also want that directly in the center, which will be in line with my blade. Before I score it, I just go across, double check that my blade is touching the mark. Here he is. Come back again, double check, it's still on the mark and if you're happy with that, I'm going to put a small amount of pressure down onto this arm here. So the blade is now touching the top of the tile, starting to press a little bit of pressure. As I'm pushing down, I'm going to score it right the way to the opposite end. 
There we go. It slid right past the tile now. This is why we butt that up against the wall so it doesn't move. Then we take this, we lift it up. And this little plate here sits on top and straddles over the score line that we did on the tiles. Once that's covered it, a quick sharp press on the top of the handle should do the job. Here we go. And that is our two tiles perfectly cut. So this was the one that we'd marked. That now should place up against here and drop in here perfectly, giving us the same size gap around the tile. Of course, they're spaced out with these base plates as what we've got around the rest of the floor. So that is one way of taking your measurements and cutting it and fitting it in perfectly. The next way is just by using a tape measure. So of course, we've got the same gap. Take your measurements from the wall to the fixed down tile on both ends, deducting a couple of millimeters for your spacer here and a couple of millimeters against the wall as well because you want to get grout all the way around the tile. Take that measurement from one end, mark it onto your tile. Take a measurement from the other end and also mark that on your tile and do the cut exactly the same. So now I'll do all my cuts right the way around the room, place them into position as a dry run. Once I'm happy that they all fit, then I'll mix up my tile adhesive and bed them into position. Now once you've cut your tile, make sure the sharp cut edge butts up to the wall itself and the smooth manufactured edge butts up to the adjacent tile where the base clips are. So now we've got a full run of tiles laid into position without any adhesive on. I'm not quite happy with the size gap. I'm going to use a four inch grinder with a diamond tip blade to cut off another couple more millimetres to give me that full six millimetre clearance. Now as you can see I've got a straight cut in here against the wall and I've got a straight cut with this tile and this row here going underneath the door. Now that goes past the door probably about 60 or 70 millimetres before it meets the next floor in there. However, this particular cut is quite an awkward one because it's got to be a set size to here. It's got to go around the architrave of the door frame, of course, which is standing out proud. And then it's got to continue through to the same length or width, should I say, as this one. Using a pen, mark around your tile onto a piece of cardboard, cut it out with your scissors, and then scribe the shape using another tile from the distance of the wall and the architrave. Once you've marked this up clearly on your piece of cardboard, then you can cut this out again using your scissors. Check that it fits and that you do have your six millimeter expansion gap around the wooden frame, architrave and the wall. If you're happy with this template, then you can place that onto your tile, scribe around it with your marker pen and start to cut this out. Cut a section off it so it's the width of the tile you need and then start to cut the shape out using a four inch grinder and a diamond tip blade. This can be slow and tricky, so make sure you use your PPE. And if you're not experienced using a grinder, it may also help by drilling some holes at the meeting point before cutting. This will help release stress from the cutting action. Now we do have a full step-by-step -step video on how to do this over on our YouTube channel. So check out the link in the description below. Perfect, it fits like a glove. All I need to do now is cut another one for the opposite side, but this time I'm not gonna make myself a template out of the cardboard. I'm just gonna do the same measurements and mark them up on the tile and just cut it straight from the tile. And this hopefully is what you'll do once you've done a few with the template and got used to doing them. And that's another almost perfect cut. So that's all my cuts now complete on both sides of the room. All I need to do now is mix up more adhesive and bed them into position. So give the areas a little dust off to make sure there's no debris in there. Spread your adhesive with a trowel and comb it through the best you can. But in some awkward areas, you can always butter the back of the tile to ensure you have a near full bed when the tiles are put into position. And then start to lay your cut tiles 
into position. Giving them a little tap, making sure they're level and butt up to the base clips. Be very slow and delicate with your grinder cut tiles because you don't want to crack these and have to do them again. Place your spirit level over the top to make sure they're flush and level with the set tiles. Once the two cuts are in either side of the door frame, then place your center cut in position. Again, check in with the tile before you leave them to set. Now, if you have any base clips and wedges still installed in the dry tiles, you can pull these out using a pair of pliers. Now, if you take these out carefully, you'll be able to reuse the wedges then you'll only have to buy some base clips for your next tiling project. So that's all the wedges and spaces now removed. I'm going to give the floor a quick clean up, seal it, and then it's ready to start grouting. Now I've left my tiles overnight to dry and then I've did my cuts either side. So they'll be dry in a couple of hours with the rapid set adhesive. So I'm just starting to clean the surfaces of the tiles now. Of course, I was wiping the wet adhesive off and that's the best time to do it. But once you've pulled all your spaces and things out, you often see the odd little spot of tile adhesive. Get yourself a scraper, scrape it up, little scrubbing brush, scrub the tile down and then wipe it and rinse it and leave it to dry. Now, before you grout your tiles, it's worth checking with Tile Mountain whether they need sealing before grouting. And you can be advised as to the product required to suit your tiles. A protector like this one can help. It's liquid form, pour it into a tray. You can apply it with a brush, a roller, or even a light handheld sprayer. Now, the beauty about sealing the tiles first it certainly makes grouting quicker and easier. Easier to apply and easier to clean up. That's the first coat complete. I'm going to leave this for about 30 minutes to dry and then apply a second one. Then within one hour, I can start my grouting. So mixing the grout is quite simple. It's powder form. I've got some cold, clean water in a bowl. I'm just going to add the powder and give it a good mix up. When mixing any powdered solutions, always use a dust mask. Now I'm mixing this by hand. However, some manufacturers advise to mix the grout with a low speed mixer to avoid air entrament. Let the mix stand for two to three minutes. Stir it again briefly, and then it can be used within 20 to 30 minutes of its preparation. Now that is the kind of consistency I'm looking for. And then take your grout and trowel, scoop some of your grout off, and slap it straight in. Now the aim is, of course, to fill the cavity in here with the grout. So I'll go over it a couple of times. And as you can see, when I'm pushing it down, I'm also scratching it off as well. And what I'm doing is I'm going across the joints on an angle. <clears throat> like this, one that way, and then one that way. And then scraping it off and moving it down onto the next gap between the tiles. The more you can scrape off quite hard with the edge of this rubber trowel, the less you have to clean up off the tiles once it's starting to react and dry off. So now I'm going to get a damp sponge, done about half of the area here, and I'm going to just create like circle motions, not too hard. What I want to do is clear off the surplus uh, grout that's still on the top of the tiles but I don't want to do it too hard and pull it out of the actual joints between the tiles. So it's just a matter of gently circling around like this for now. It will still dry cloudy and very kind of white. And turn it over, you can see we've took off some of it there and a little bit more buffing like this. As you can see, this has had about 15 minutes now since I first sponged it and it's drying quite white and cloudy as expected. So you have to keep doing this 
at least two or three times. You can even get a dry cloth or some tissue and give it a dry as you're going. It's not quite dry enough, that patch there. This has had five or 10 minutes. That's only had three or four minutes there. So I'm gonna leave that for another three or four minutes and apply some more grout across the tiles that side. When mixing your grout, do not mix too much. You've probably got about 15 to 25 minutes to use it once it's mixed. So depending on how big your tiles are and how much grout you need, just be cautious about how much you actually mix. Now the floor grout is dry. I've got this small gap all the way around the outside edge. What I'd recommend is to use a waterproof clear silicone sealant all the way down, filling that cavity right the way around exactly where the floor meets the wall. Once you've applied your silicone, lightly rub your finger across the top just to make sure you smooth it off and fill the whole gap. So now the grout is completely dry, I'm going to seal it again, this time sealing the grout as well as the tiles. This not only is going to protect the tiles, but it's also going to seal the grout as well, which will make it last longer, that's for sure. But it'll also stop it discolouring as well over the years where in bathrooms or kitchens, you can often get uh, grease and dirt and things in them when they're being mopped and cleaned. But by sealing them, it's going to avoid that happening. Now this looks like it's very wet and glossy when it's first applied. But don't worry, once it dries out, It'll dry with a bit more of a matte finish to it and it won't be as shiny or wet looking. So that's how you set out and fix down floor tiles. If you're looking for more inspiration, check us out on all social media handles. But if you want to see more how-to videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to know about the vast range of floor and products that Tile Mountain stock, check out their website, tilemountain.co.uk.